This is the Ford FS1 College Hoops tip-off, sponsored by the F-150, built for tough. And this is the fifth top 25 matchup in the history of this building. 23rd ranked Providence and 8th ranked Xavier ready to face off in Cincinnati. Here in mid-February, Xavier trying to keep pace with Villanova, set up a big matchup with the top two teams in this building next week. Providence at 7-6 and six, trying to fight its way back near the top of the conference standings. And we say welcome courtside. Joe Davis with Steve Lavin. Coach, this is going to be good. I mean, we got the top two scorers in the conference on Providence. Xavier, one of the deepest teams in the country. We know we're both really looking forward to getting this one going. Well, electrifying environment. Yeah. Mid-February, teams starting to find themselves. We're coming down the home stretch. Two different objectives here. If you're Xavier, you want to stay in the hunt for the Big East Championship and position yourself for potential one or two seed. They've got their eyes set on a Final Four run this year but you've got to win games between now and the NCAA tournament. And then on the flip side, Providence out to the great start, 14-1, and one, playing 500 basketball in conference, 7-6 and six tonight. They need to close strong, make a statement to the selection committee if they hope to get a top four or five seed. Let's take a quick look at the starting lineups brought to you by Jeep Renegade. Chris Dunn, second leading scorer in the conference. Ben Benzel, number one in the conference, more than 20 per game. And for Xavier, Blewett, Abel, Davis, Sumner, and Rattle. There's Chris Dunn, top two in the conference in all three of those categories. One of the best players in the country. All five meetings between these programs as members of the Big East have been decided by single digits. This one begins with Xavier. Best record in the country, trying to sweep the season series and move to five and one this year against top 25 competition. Here's Jalen Reynolds, had a monster game in the first meeting in Rhode Island, but travels on his first touch tonight. Well, in spite of the turnover, clear that Providence Joe's defensively coming out in the man-to-man -man will probably go to their zone later. Providence started the season 14-1, like you mentioned, five and six since then. But they've already got two top ten road wins this season. Nobody else in the country has more than one. And there's Ben Bentz on the conference's leading score, more than 20 per contest. Well, Bentel, the sophomore, continues to add dimensions to his game. More comfortable facing the basket, uh, playmaking, using the bounce as well. Remy Abel knocks down a three. He's in double figures for the first time in more than a month. And the win against Butler on Saturday. An impressive 74-57 win in Indy. They shot 57% in that game lap. Here's Chris Dunn with a step back. Rick Reynolds the board. Sumner pushing, navigated inside. Edmund Sumner has it knocked out of bounds. Chris Mack took over in 2009, seventh season now. And putting together one of the best seasons in program history. And they've got a late foul call here that Chris Mack will like. It's number one on Ben Bentel. And Cooley knows that he doesn't have a ton of depth behind Bentel inside. I say that Sumner was in the act of shooting, so two for the French freshman. Transition, clearly a foul. Sumner attacking the rim. Both these teams will be aggressive in terms of playing at a brisk pace. Uh, they prefer the pedal to the metal of the fast and furious, and they run off their defense. And Xavier much improved on this end of the floor from previous seasons. One of Chris Mack's best defensive teams, Junior Lombamba. Bullock had it for a moment, then got fouled. See how aggressive Xavier is with those ball screens, uh, their defense. They will stay with, keep Chris Dunn in the crowd defensively or keep him boxed, uh, not allow him to turn the corner or split defenders. Here's the turnover off of the inbounds pass. Xavier runs, Abel feeds Sumner, who laid it off the front of the rim for a Reynolds follow. And poor transition defense by Providence, not scrambling back. And that allows Reynolds to get that two-hand jam follow-up. 
Seven in a row for Xavier. Xavier Bentles jumping. Xavier can punish you on the boards. Uh, if you don't put a body on the Musketeers, they'll get second and third shots. One of the better rebounding teams in the country. Offensive foul and an easy call for Jamie Lucky. It's Junior Lamamba instead of that forearm. Transition basketball, two on one, a pretty give up, just not able to finish. Uh, but Reynolds right there for the weight room jam. I like that. Weight room jam. He looks like he spent some time in there, huh? Yeah, spring and summer, you know, getting those three square meals and uh, doing the work with the strength and conditioning people. Uh, that's where you really, you know, add dimensions in terms of strength and conditioning is that off season. During the year, it's maintenance. It's him again. Reynolds with a slam off of the feed from Sumner, and Coley wants a timeout. Uh, razor sharp here early. Six. But Jalen Reynolds dealt with foul trouble on Saturday in Indy, played just eight minutes, set only six points, but he's already got four and resounding fashion to begin this one. Well, the length and strength, the follow-up in the break, and here off the pick, and the roll to the bucket's got good feet, and that foot race allows him to get that easy opportunity. High percentage looks, what we call zero footers, Joe. Here's Chris Dunn with a step back three. What a pretty move. A graceful move. Tight handles, good footwork, able to create separation between himself and the defender. Abel's second triple. The Musketeers are locked in, calibrated, both offensively and defensively, tied together here early in this ball game. Good hedge from Reynolds. Ezekiel's back to Dunn. Working against Remy Abel, one of the best on-ball defenders in the conference. Now Bento, face-up jumper. Reynolds ahead of the pack, corrals it. Takes it into Bento, he's already got one foul. Jalen Reynolds off the back iron. Tyron Cartwright. Finds Fizikas, corner three, and a foul on Bullock on the rebound. We mentioned it last night in the broadcast, Creighton and Butler, but Xavier has the balance of size, strength, uh, skill, uh, their depth, uh, both a perimeter and an interior attack and even contributors uh, in each class. A, a very balanced team. It's why they have an opportunity to make a run to a Final Four. So many options at Coach Mack's disposal. And headed the other way with a foul on Remy Abel. That cross screen action underneath. You mentioned the depth. Six players averaging at least 9.4 per game. And that leads to them being the top scoring offense in conference games. And that's another uh, dimension of balance, uh, balance scoring. They don't rely on one or two players. They can distribute it. It's a democracy offensively. Able with back-to-back -back fouls in a hurry. And number two on their top perimeter defender. Xavier's off to a good start, trying to improve on the nation's best record, 22-3. East College Hoops on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Renegade. Take off and take on anything. All Xavier so far with a 12-5 advantage, trying to sweep the season series, trying to move to six and one against the top 25 this season. You mentioned the balance that Chris Mack's team has. One of the best rebounding teams in the country. They get to the line a ton, and when they hit that 40% mark, you can book a win. Well, and championship teams are built from the inside out. Uh, when you're anchored along the baseline, both offensively and defensively, uh, you go into games with the confidence knowing you've got a competitive edge. 22-3, and 10-3 and three in conference play. Still two games back of Villanova, which has a non-conference matchup tonight. Big five matchup against Temple, which won't be easy. There's that 1-3-1 one, one zone. 
Cartwright had it knocked away. Dunn got it back, worked inside, turned it over. Makira starts the fast break to Sumner. Euro steps around Cartwright. Yeah, the Friars' transition defense uh, has not excelled this evening. Short legged, uh, not organized, not scrambling back with the sense of urgency that Coach Cooley would like to see. Rodney Bullock provided that third source in the win against Georgetown on Saturday. Had 23 to lead the way for the Friars. Inside they go, James Farr backing in on Benzel. Went straight up and avoided a second foul. And Providence wants to push the ball. And another turnover. Yeah, those empty possessions are costly on the road in college basketball, but in particular when you're playing one of the better teams in the country, you want to get a shot on rim, on rim, give yourself a chance to get fouled, a chance to get a second shot as well. So empty possessions are a recipe or formula for a loss. Rear rest for Chris Dunn. Drew Edwards comes in. He's not seen much time lately. Jalen Lindsay's also in the game for the Friars. Blewett gets fouled. That's Bullock's second. You know, it's important when you play Xavier that you try and beat them down the court for easy opportunities. That's no easy task because Xavier plays great defense. They emphasize their transition defense and, and forcing teams to play against their set half-court man and zone alignments. Uh, but if Providence can get out and get some easy ones before that 1-3-1 one, one sets up, uh, it goes a long way to helping their cause. Well, that's what Providence wants to do to begin with, right? I mean, they're so good pushing the ball up the floor. And organized, see if you can get one before the Musketeers, like that. From Rodney Bullock. He's got five now after that 23-point performance on Saturday. And a game lab that they led by 26 at the dunk and had to block a shot in the final possession to hang on 75-72. Yeah, that's always the challenge is the sustained effort. Good look. Blewett knocks it down. And Makara with the nice... Fine. And then the foul. You want to avoid that contact when you're 30, 35 feet from the basket uh, defending a perimeter player. Important against this 1-3-1 one, three, one, one, three, one zone uh, that you're strong with the basketball. Uh, fake a pass before making a pass. A purposeful use of the bounce. Providence was miserable against his 1-3-1 in the first matchup, but so far struggling against it again as Dunn turns it over. You know, it's a less conventional half-court defense. And as a result, uh, teams are not as familiar or comfortable facing it. Uh, they get a bit unnerved or discombobulated. Uh, they get out of rhythm uh, facing this 1-3-1. Short corner and Smith back to Dunn, who fires up a brick and a foul on the rebound. The other thing was in the first matchup lab was Remember, Providence had that game against Villanova scheduled for a Saturday, got pushed back to Sunday because of the snowstorm. So Ed Cooley had 48 hours to get ready for a Tuesday game against Xavier and against that unfamiliar, unconventional 1-3-1. One, one. Yeah, and it sometimes becomes a bit psychological, but you don't have your normal uh, entries into offense because the way the 1-3-1 one, lifts, uh, the way it's able to trap, and again, just a bit unnerving because of its unfamiliarity. Blue and Reigns one in from the corner. Leading score for the Musketeers at 15 per game. And blew it with a smooth stroke. Edwards loses the handle. It's another Providence turnover. Already six for the Friars. Very sharp Musketeer attack, both offensively and defensively. Ball being transported, hot potato very crisply. Sumner knew it. Started to retreat as soon as he let it go. And when everyone touches, you tend to shoot the ball at a higher percentage. You tend to get open looks. You know, there are certain games uh, where you just see a team come out and they're on point. Uh, they're tied together. Defensively, their rotations, uh, you know, beating the opponent to the ball, up the floor, on the glass. Uh, and to this point in the game, Xavier appears to be locked in. And uh, now the key is Providence counterpunching and being able to go on a run of their own here. It was a game of runs that first time around when Xavier beat Providence in Rhode Island, 75-68.
One and done here. Bentel too strong for the jumper. Makira in a hurry. Reverses it up and in. And another timeout for Ed Coley. Xavier making a statement tonight. Xavier hot shooting from outside to begin four or five from three. Let's go inside Ed Cooley's huddle. Well, Ed Cooley trying to stem the bleeding. The combination of turnovers and quick shots by Providence has allowed Xavier to get out in transition for high percentage looks. And it's an excellent shooting team. Uh, multiple marksmen on the floor at all times for the Musketeers makes them a tough matchup. It stretches the defense and then allows the bigs inside to have more time and space to operate in single coverage. Right now, Butler's at home watching, saying, how do you like it, Providence? Xavier came out and shot 8 of 11 in the first half on Saturday. That was one game after they went 1 for 21 in a loss at Creighton. La Mamba, baseline J. Well, that's one area against the 1-3-1 that's vulnerable, and that's the baseline short corner or mid-range jump shot. Also sometimes screening the low man in that 1-3-1 could be effective or even posting him up like you do in a man-to-man -man defense, but against the 1-3-1 could be effective. It's short corner, a spot they worked on a shooter on this morning trying to attack. It's a spot that Desi Rodriguez of Seton Hall was able to exploit. He went off for one of his best career games. James Farr hooks it in. Now James Farr with that old school low post pivot game. Last year was a bit more perimeter oriented. He's taken his game lower. It's paid dividends, finishing at a higher percentage. A near double-double man. Lindsay did a nice job to catch in traffic. Then Bentel threw up an air ball from point blank. Yeah, Bentel's got to go stronger. Better off gathering and trying to go right through the chin to the rim. Miles Davis lost the handle, got it back. James Farr in and out. Rebound Lindsay, but a foul on Providence. That is already foul number six on Providence. So Xavier moves into the bonus at the 10 51 mark. Davis and Farr sit down for Chris Mack. Reynolds and Kaiser Gates come in. Well, again, Chris Mack will substitute liberally, keep fresh Musketeers on the court, which allows them to play at the pace and to pressure and sustain it over the course of the game. There's a cumulative or a wearing effect that has on opponents. Yeah, they are so deep across the board. Reynolds called for the foul away from the ball. It's like at every spot you can bring somebody in and not have a huge drop off. And they methodically dismantle teams through their punishing defense and their changing defenses. And then offensively, they attack the rim well. Again, no real chink in the armor when you look at this Musketeer team. Ezekiel says it knocked away in that short corner. A lap stop, lost it at a bounce. You know, without Sumner uh, during that stretch where he had the injury. Wow. Yeah, Bentel heat check. Austin can't corral it. Able to save it in bounds for Reynolds. Well, there's another 50 50 ball that Providence should have had. Again, alert and aggressive tonight. The. Musketeers just beating Providence to the punch in every aspect of play. Makira downtown, short. Even against this 1-3-1, you need to explore that short corner and some interior touches. Not many looks at the rim. Again, easier said than done, but give yourself a chance to probe or investigate uh, the interior. Something going to the rim if you're Providence. Blew it at the mid-range, can't hit. Bullock with a rebound. Xavier's gone a bit cold. The Providence yet to take advantage on this end. You see the swarm around Dunn, almost like eight in the boxes. Makara with the steal, the long arms there. 
Dunn hustles back. Bullock at the rim can't get it. Mazikas able to pull down the rebound. Empty trip for Xavier. See the length of Mugura bothering opponents out top here. Here's Bullock stepping into a three. And Reynolds, despite being in the zone, able to get the board. Yeah, the aggressive team tonight has been Xavier. Uh, Ed Cooley will be addressing that in his next time out and at halftime. Kaiser Gates first shot won't go. Dunn's got it. Looks to push and beat that zone up the floor. Fazekas in transition. And nothing falling on either end right now. Well, and that's been the challenge over the course of the season for Providence is if Bento and Dunn aren't scoring, the Friars go into the desert. Uh, there are long droughts offensively, and their numbers become anemic at the offensive end of the floor. And they get more than half of their points in league games from Dunn and Bento. The constant storyline has been who will that third source be? Harry Austin in traffic, off balance. Got it off. Reynolds followed it, but left it short. And another transition opportunity for Chris Dunn. Crossing over, stepping inside, and showing off some of that draft and NBA potential. Well, there's that fluidity or the grace in the open court. Able to use the bounce, covers a lot of ground coast to coast, and the length to finish at the rim. Well, Chris Dunn able to finally get one to go for Providence. As Xavier's gone cold on the other end. Friars trying to take advantage, but doing so slowly. Chris Mack's team hit nine of its first 13 shots. One for nine since, and we go inside his huddle. We gotta grind them out. As hard as they're having a tough time scoring, we're like, we're letting them off the hook. A couple times they scored, we're in transition. Right. Well, great teams, great coaches want to go for the knockout punch, in particular on your home court where you've got the crowd behind you and if you have a team on the ropes, you want to go in for the knockout. If you're Providence and at Cooley, you want to stay within striking distance, stay in that rearview mirror, be able to make a run, get it under double digits going into half and give yourself an opportunity in the second half. They go right inside to Sean O'Meara, fresh off of the bench. He gets his first points of the night. And that's Xavier. They're a smash-mouth basketball team. Uh, the resistance at the rim, the rebounding, offensively pounding the ball into the interior. What a play by Dunn to tip it to Bentel. That's a three. And sometimes that's the break you need. See the ball splash through the net. And suddenly you come down offensively with a little more confidence. Can he get credit for a, a steal and an assist in one motion? Because I think that's what that was. He tipped it away, get credit for a steal, but right to Benzel to pop from three. That's a good question. Aggressiveness oh here by Dunn. Oh my goodness. Draw the foul. Well, that's the aggressiveness, that push in first gear. We call it the road runner, the beep beepers. And there's the broken play, assist. Steal, three ball. Here, putting on a Barishnikov dance out there. His ability uh, with grace and the ability to accelerate, get to the rim. It was Dunn's 200th career steal. So he becomes the first Providence player ever with 1,000 points, 500 assists, 400 rebounds, and those 200 steals. When you get the sense that Chris Dunn, in the last few possessions, has realized he may have to carry this Providence team the rest of the way, uh, put his teammates on his shoulders as he has in other games this year and throughout his career, and just try and carry them individually. Foul on Drew Edwards, and that'll put Trayvon Blewett at the line for a one and one I think that's why there's a sense around the conference and around the country that this is not a team you want to play going into March. You've got a guy like Dunn, you've got a guy like Benzel who can do that. They can put the team on their shoulders and win a game for you. Yeah, they're the dynamic duo. Uh, just a terrific tandem in terms of a perimeter player and someone along the baseline. Bentel and Dunn, that combination or one-two punch, uh, as good as it gets in the country, the challenge for Providence is who are those third and fourth contributors? Who else joins the party to try and balance 
the attack offensively for Providence. Tonight it's done with seven to lead the way. Bentel and Bullock both with five. As Blua makes a pair and extends the lead back to double digits. Cartwright has it knocked away. Another Providence turnover. They're ninth of this first half. Well, alert and aggressive. Active hands, active feet, and Sumner. Wow! Able to finish. I think he intended on slamming it, but adjusted midair for the lay-in. I like the fact he kept his head up. That's what allowed him to see the opportunity, the vision, and then he seized it with the ability to accelerate just a different gear. Here he's looking up the floor and the blow by. More rotation defensively. Again, straight on. I thought about Duncan. Yeah, you were strapping down, right? You're getting ready to let it go. Nine for Sumner as he sits down with his second foul. You know, the first game between these teams is the worst game he's played in a Xavier uniform. Had just one point, an old nine from the field. Might have been something to have put pressure on himself facing Chris Dunn head to head, and then got off to a slow start. Chris Mack thought that atmosphere in Providence rattled himself. Well, and that's the beauty of the Xavier team, is someone can have an off night. Even two players can have an off night. Or there might be one aspect of play where you struggle from the foul line or rebounding, and yet, they're balanced enough, and they come at you in so many ways, they can still get a win, even when they're not playing their best. One of two for Drew Edwards. You know, we call that margin for error. Some teams play with a greater margin for error than others. Akira given room. Takes it into Bentle. Kicks it to Blewett. He rises and buries another three. What a pretty looking stroke. Excellent rotation, the pronation in the wrist. Largest lead of the game for Xavier as Blue moves into double figures. See multiple looks defensively by Xavier. Four white shirts around him done, so he kicked the bullock, and now it's Cartwright. He's not been scoring lately. Good hustle from Bullock for a fresh possession. And Bullock pays it off with a three. Big shot. Eight for him now to lead Providence. Down by a dozen. Miles Davis finding Jalen Reynolds. Back to Davis. Important the guards rebound in a game like this. Guards, perimeter players got to rally back to the paint or the rim and help the big guys against this daunting Xavier front line. Edward Short with a three. And then an intentional foul. Called on Drew Edwards running up the floor alongside J.P. Makira. Huh. Kira with the closeout, the high hand. And it kind of just got tangled. I know there's a little reach out. And now Ed Coley just got teed up. Well, Jamie Lucky had heard enough. Coach Cooley was not happy with the call. And we're seeing this coast to coast this time of the year, mid-February, with what's at stake the significance of each game and as a result the vital signs are north the adrenaline the blood pressure and so we should have four free throws here the two for the intentional for jp makira will come after miles davis shoots the two for the technical on ed cooley and ed cooley an emotional coach everyone has different styles but he works the sidelines in a manner where he's very animated and he wears his emotions on the sleeve but he's also calculating and wouldn't be surprised here if he's not trying to generate some energy uh, trying to pick up that technical to let his players know he's got their back and he wants to see them move the meter become more aggressive here bring something to the fight uh, this should be a donnybrook 
And to this point, Providence has been the passive team uh, on their heels, not playing as aggressively as Ed Cooley would like to see. Yeah, Coach Flappin using the word Donnybrook in the first half of your winner. <laughs> One more for J.P. Makira. So Xavier makes three of four, and they'll have the ball. Every Big East game coming down the stretch will be a Donnybrook. <laughs> So the lead back to the largest of the game for exit 15. And even with the freedom of movement and the emphasis, uh, more frequent whistles in terms of officiating, you really see under the basket, uh, in the paint, uh, that's where you see the uh, WWF, the, like the offensive and defensive line going yeah. at it in yeah. the paint. Able foul on the baseline drive. And two shots coming as a result on the 10th foul of this half. This one on Jalen Lindsay. Able to good foul shooter. Now Xavier gets to the line so often. Close to 30 free throws per game. Providence, though, does a nice job normally of not fouling. Well, their zone defense in particular keeps them out of foul trouble allows them to level off penetration keep their best players in the game which is critical when you don't have the depth which is the case with ed cooley's team he positions his fires to be successful this is their potential third consecutive ncaa tournament if they can finish strong and make the ncaa's as expected uh, first time in 42 years yeah. that's been accomplished at providence Go back to the 70s chris dunn Strong take, draw the foul, two shots coming. Junior out of New London, Connecticut. Larry Austin gets called for the foul. This is a really important final 403 of this first half. Well, it is because you want to stay within striking distance if you're Ed Cooley. Now, you want some momentum going into half so you can put the wind back in the sails, feel good about yourself coming into the final 20 minutes of play. The goal in these final four minutes is to get it under double digits, get it to nine or eight. If you do better, that's gravy. Uh, but make it a three, four possession game going into that half. Regroup, recalibrate. Talk about what you want to amplify or emphasize for the second half of play. Here's some pressure off of the main free throw. I like the press from a standpoint that it creates a more aggressive mindset. But it exposes you to that. Well, and Bentol just needs to move his feet there, not reach, not lunge, try and wall up and impede that drive. That's his second foul, but it puts J.P. Makira at the line. All right, guys, looking forward to it. All Xavier this one so far with a 39-25 advantage. They hit four of their first five threes. Right now, five of nine from outside. Now, Trayvon Blewett leading the way with 10 points, only playing the game in double figures. Had that really poor shooting game against Creighton two games ago, but when you go back to the Butler game Saturday, into this one, they've been red hot. That temper started to flare some. Well, no surprise, mid-February. Chris Dunn, Ben Bentel, top two scorers in the conference. Done with nine. We've seen Chris Dunn some in this half, really trying to put the team on his shoulders. And carry him back. Well, he's going to have to in this game on the road against such a talented, deep Xavier team. Be aggressive on every catch. It doesn't mean you force, but explore in an aggressive manner. Investigate in an aggressive manner on every possession and on every catch if you're Chris Dunn. One of two for J.P. Makira. His 15-point lead matches the largest for the Musketeers. And a foul, or else he was headed the other way. And again, Xavier with the deflection by far. Providence picks up a foul, done to the foul line. One and one for Chris Dunn. Nine points, four rebounds, three assists. Had those three turnovers in the opening minutes, but the sharper in the last second. It's been 14 to two edge to the Musketeers in terms of points in the paint. 
and again, we talk about the line of scrimmage in football. In basketball, the line of scrimmage is the paint, the rim. And in most cases, if a team dominates in terms of rebounding, points in the paint, getting themselves to the foul line, it's because they're dominating that area of the game. And those are usually the teams that win. Now add to it the three-point shooting uh, that Xavier is able to to have in the mix as well. That's why there's such a difficult matchup. Here's the 2-3 zone by Providence. Which has helped Providence be one of the best three-point defenses in the country. By far the best at conference games. So the zone helps him force a turnover. Quick hands, good deflection there. Cartwright with a point-blank shot that's barely scraping the front of the rim. Now that point-blank shot would have cut it to 11. Red has been struggling to score it lately. Only six points over his last three games. Still been distributing, but those scoring numbers down for the sophomore. Shot clock riding down to six. Miles Davis, high arcing three, no. Blew it the offensive rebound and lays it in. That's one of the vulnerabilities of the 2-3 zone is you don't have pinpointing responsibilities as you do in a man-to-man. -man. And it's important within your area that you put a body on someone so they don't get those second shot opportunities. Dunn travels. Xavier trying to beat Providence back up the floor, but an offensive foul on Remy Abel is his third. So Abel has to sit down. Kaiser Gates comes in for him. Just when it looks like Chris Mack's team is about to put that foot on the accelerator, extend his lead beyond 15. It's like something happens like that that allows Providence to stay at least reasonably within striking distance. Important here that Providence does exactly what Chris Dunn did. Something going to the basket, something in the paint. When you've got a deficit, like this on the road, 15 points, you've got to chip away at it. Uh, put backs in terms of offensive boards, get yourself to the foul line, try and get a run out off of your defense. It's Dunn's first miss at the line today. And his seventh attempt. Plays more minutes than anybody else in the conference in Big East games. Ben Bentel not far behind him. One of two for Chris Dunn. Well, Ed Cooley's done a masterful job over the years at Providence when he hasn't had depth. You go back to Bryce Cotton, uh, similar to Chris Dunn. He was a security blanket, very rarely took him out of the game. The zone defense helps to keep his players out of foul trouble. Akira trying to slip it in for far, but it was knocked out of bounds and the limb bound 15 to shoot. My point being there that Ed Cooley has experience in navigating a season, a successful season, with a short bench and having one or two key players, whether it's a Bryce Cotton or this year a Ben Bentel and Chris Dunn. They only have one bench point today, though. Excellent rotation for a Miles Davis three. Dunn with a fastball for Bentel, who turns it over. Davis behind the back, on the push. Miles Davis end-to-end, -end, but can't finish. And now done as we go back and forth. Jalen Lindsay. No, that's been the story for him this year. Foul on the floor on X. And then a technical on James Farr. Jamie Lucky again, the same official that teed up Ed Cooley. Now gets Makura with the technical. Now emotions running high. It's far. far. Or did they just say Miles Davis? Miles Davis is saying, wait a minute, what? 
I'm not sure that you got that one right. Yeah, Chris Mack saying that this guy's not going to do anything to warrant a technical. They may need to take a look at the monitor. <laughs> Chris is saying he, he's not that kind of guy. It would be Farr's first. It would be Davis's second. Either way, Ben Bentle at the line with one more coming. So let's see. Who's guilty, Lev? Yeah, I just think that's a natural reaction. It wasn't anything directed no. at the official. Um, you have to allow 18 to 22 year olds to show some emotion. They're not, they're not zombies. Uh, they're not robots. They are human beings. And a lot is at stake at this time of the year. It's a significant matchup. And I understand if a coach is running on the floor or if a player uh, is going after an official uh, in an unsportsmanlike way or unbecoming behavior. Uh, but to me, that's just a natural reaction uh, if you're a competitor. And while you, you want to reel that in, ideally, uh, they are 18 to 22 year olds. Yeah, I think there was a magic word there that caught Jamie Lucky's attention and ultimately drew the call. So officially, the common foul that puts Ben Bentel at the line for these shots is on James Farr. The technical, the magic uh, Miles word. Davis. Magic word. Yeah, you I can't hear that, anything right? in here. How did Jamie Lucky <laughs> read his hear lips? That? Sign language. Yeah, there, there's a different sign for that magic word. I don't think he used that. Three or four for Bentel. Hopefully no more technicals the rest of the way. No. Blew it. In the middle of the zone, buries it. Now that's the sweet spot. The high post and the short corner. Great place to operate, play make, and shot make from those sweet spots. Bullock rolls in a three, and he's having a good first half after that 23-point performance on Saturday. He's got 11. And after Providence, critical to get a couple stops, execute on offense, and go into half with some momentum. Romero wants it in the block against Bentel, who's playing with two fouls. And on the flip side here, Xavier wants to hold on to the momentum. And Blewett gets the roll, 17 for Trayvon Blewett. Got to know where shooters are. Bentel with a hook shot, no. Unbeaten this season when taking a lead into the break, which they will hear. One shot here for Xavier. They'll have enough time to try and get a second shot as well with the differential of four seconds. And a bad foul on Chris Dunn. Man. Clearly the Friars will have to regroup. Uh, that'll be Ed Cooley and staff's main objective at halftime. Number one, starting with aggression and competing, getting back on defense, getting organized in their defensive schemes, and then offensively, uh, looking to play through the paint, get better looks on the interior, and play inside out. Well, if they need any display of this game not being over, they've just got to look to their own game on Saturday when they led Georgetown by 26 and barely held on. But this is a monster hole they're going to have to climb out of. Cartwright will fire the final shot of the half and knock it down. A big one to finish this half and bring it to 15. 17 in the first half for Trayvon Blewett, who averages 15 per game. Second most points and a half this year for Axe 54. The previous side, they roll out 52 against Providence. Coming up at halftime, the Jeep Renegade Halftime Report. Mike Kill and Jim Jackson will have it in just a moment. Six. Providence started this season 14 and one. They're going to need a big second half run to avoid falling to five and seven since that 14 and one start to the year. Xavier trying to add on to a nation best 22 wins. 
Our stats update is sponsored by Jeep Renegade. Take off, take on anything. Xavier again shooting well from outside. Knocked down seven threes in that first half. After a nice outside shooting game against Butler on Saturday. Trying to move to 21-0 this season. We're moving into the second half with the lead. We're ready to get you set for this second half. Joe Davis and Coach Lavin, take me inside that Providence locker room. What's your message here? Well, Ed Cooley's going to tell his team it's about effort, it's about pride. They're going to begin with the defensive side of the ball, giving up 50% from the field, 58 from the three-point line. So they have to do a better job of ball pressure, uh, holding Xavier to one shot, which will allow them to get out and transition and get some easy baskets. But I think it's about bringing more spirit, more pluck, more fight. Uh, he's going to want to see a resilient Friar effort here in this second half. You saw him laying into his team before they even took the floor there trying to fire him off. Trayvon blew at 17 points in that first half to lead off scores. Well, a beautiful shooting stroke and wisely the Musketeers are probing or investigating looking for Blewett. Uh, you see from different angles his ability to knock down shots at the mid post in the deep corner here out top where he gets a good look at the circumference of the rim. So we're always talking about who's that third source. Will it be Rodney Bullock? Well, I mean, yeah, it has been. He's been good again, but Ben Bentzel relatively quiet, two of seven during that first half. And they need a collective, a collaborative approach here, both offensively and defensively. But there's a, a good look on the first possession. Uh, yeah. They invert down and they try and go down low. And they get the fourth foul on Remy Abel. So good things happen. You'll be rewarded if you're willing and patient enough uh, to look for those opportunities in the basket area. Significant, by the way, because Abel, when they're in the man-to-man, -man, is the one defending Chris Dunn. They begin the second half with a nicely designed inbound play that gets two more. Rodney Bullock. You know, the first two looks. A post up for Dunn and an out of bounds play, well executed. Range shot. Now. I've got into that step back and was able to draw the foul on his jump shot. But it was an aggressive move. Dunn during that first half will have a very Chris Dunn-like line. 12 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, but also 4 turnovers. It's a number that you tend to live with with Dunn because of everything else he brings in. You know, the heavy minutes and the major responsibilities in leading this Friar team. One of two. Got it down to a dozen. And a man defense for Providence. Sumner lobs it to the corner for Blewett. Against Bentel. Reynolds wanted it inside. Now Sumner back to Davis. Miles Davis, runner off the iron. Long rebound, Lamamba. What a pass, LaMamba to Bentel, who got lucky to have it roll home. Well, consecutive shutouts defensively for Providence and consecutive baskets on the interior. Coming out first five minutes clear, what Ed Cooley emphasized at halftime. Blew it out of the corner. Too strong. LaMamba's there for the weak side board. Looks to push for the Friars. LaMamba's stop and start. Bounce to the baseline, Bullock. And there's Blewett to pull it down. Sumner in transition. Sumner puts it in. And there's Sumner's ability, like a track meet, to get out. High speeds and the length to finish. Bentall rejected at the rim by Reynolds and no foul. Over the top for Reynolds, out of bounds. James Farr comes in. How about this play defensively? Oh, good resistance at the rim by the Musketeers. And then Reynolds here with a little bit of a moving screen to create the lane for Sumner to get the easy bucket. But again, deep 
defensively, Providence has to try and make an effort uh, to wall up or take a charge or make a play uh, at the rim there. More resistance necessary. Amaba misfired. Here's Blewett. Amakira. Blew it with a crossover and a kick. Akira trapped in the short corner. Inside a 10 to shoot. It's Blew it. On the deck. Tough shot. Baker. No. Fazekas has it. And then he's fouled by JP Makira. And much better defense here in the second half by Providence. Moving the feet, leveling off dribble penetration, helping early on dribble penetration, rotating quickly back to shooters, a high hands, ball pressure, and then finishing with the rebound. Providence looking for an NCAA best third top 10 road win this season. Here's LaMamba with some room, leaves it for Bentzel, lays it in, and they've got it down to 10. These are all good looks at the rim. High percentage. Close as they've been since it was 28-18. Midway through that first half. Run defends, blew it. Reynolds rolls to the bucket. Gets it in the paint. Second guessed himself and left it short. Dunn nearly throws it away. Lamamba has it in the corner. Cross court Fazekas. His three brings it to single digits. Great run. Chris Mack electing not to go with the timeout. Until now, he does. How oh, about the start to this second half for Providence? Well, they established the rim, Joe. Going low. Once you establish the inside, now that opens up the perimeter. Bottoms. Friars back in it. Timeout. Big East College Hoops on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Renegade. Take off and take on anything. This has turned into a game in the blink of an eye with a 13-2 Providence run to cut it to seven. Right now, our bracket experts has them as a seven seed with an RPI at 40. Really nice wins against Villanova and Arizona, but they've got that bad loss at Nepal. And also by the book, the committee will look at Marquette at this point as two bad losses because they've got an RPI outside of the top 100. They were banged up some against DePaul. Uh, still not a good loss, uh, but when you factor in the injuries they were dealing with in that game, it helps to some degree. Here's Farr backing in on Bullock. Got inside, couldn't hit. Somehow Reynolds got it back in a big bucket. One three one by Xavier. Dunn penetrates from an angle, bounces into traffic and out of bounds. By the way, Edmund Sumner not just not on the floor, but not on the bench right now either. Edmund Sumner is headed at least out of the internal part of the arena. We'll investigate while we take this break. The number one. During the break, Evan Sumner back to the floor behind the trainer, David Fluker, but a good sign for Xavier that he at least re-emerges while Providence has climbed back into this game. They trailed by 18. They've got it down to nine. How have they done it, Lamb? Well, a vigorous effort here. Interior baskets uh, amplifying their purpose at the rim. Looking for easy opportunities. The extra pass, good interior passing as well. Defense has created some offense and just a focus collectively uh, to not settle for jump shots. And yet once you establish the paint, get some interior looks, that does open up more standstill quality looks from the perimeter. So they complement one another. So above 50% in this half for Providence. And on the other end, they've held Xavier to two of eight from the field. Miles Davis are on the point with Sumner back in the building, but still on the bench. Remy Abel on the bench with four fouls. Here's James Farr against Ben Bentzel, explodes and puts it up. Reynolds couldn't follow it. LaMamba rips it down. Is 
Xavier comfortable staying in that 1-3-1. Providence trying to find some offensive comfort against it. Bentel normally really good in that short corner. A soft spot in that 1-3-1, but can't hit. And you might want to reverse the ball, you know, take a look, give yourself a chance to get fouled. Davis, nice penetration, mid-range pull up and gets the soft carom, the shooter's touch. You know, getting the ball reversed is always a good idea in offensive basketball. You don't have the numbers in transition. Get it to the other side of the floor. Another shot is launched before ball reversal. Makira for three. Long rebound, tipped out. Miles Davis with bodies crashing to the floor. James Farr takes advantage with a slam. And Bento needs to do a better job of moving the feet, creating resistance at the rim. Kind of went for the swipe there. The Ole defense and Xavier with the dunk. Bullock, Lamamba fades. Reynolds has it. Xavier stemming the tide. You mentioned the game of runs. Punch, counter punch, and Davis starting to feel it. The old grizzled veteran. Chris Dunn for three. Davis there for the rebound. Eyes up, lofting one. Out of bounds. A little bit too aggressive. He was feeling it though, wasn't he? And he said right away, my bad, my fault. Looked at Coach Mack just to let him know, letting his teammates know. Well, that's a senior, that's a leader. Own up to it, get a stop defensively. You saw there, he's already got a career high nine assists. He's looking for number 10, but it's a turnover instead. What I love about Miles Davis is he'll do whatever it takes to win. There's games where he just distributes the ball, Gets his teammates involved. There's other games where he steps up and contributes offensively and knocks down big shots. Here's Bullock out of the corner. James Farr has the board. Blew it quickly back up the floor. And got fouled before the shot. Kyron Cartwright. Well, good team's counterpunch. Providence comes out at halftime, goes on an impressive run, and now Xavier on a run of their own. 8-0, spurred by Miles Davis, running the point with Sumner on the bench. Here's Farr against Bentel, face-off jumper. Dunn had to go off his hand, fresh possession for the Musketeers. Ten Musketeers have had minutes this evening. And again, that cumulative effect of wearing down opponents because Chris Mack substitutes liberally, has confidence in all ten. And a breakdown defensively as Makura, the recipient of a good pass, the easy deuce off the window. And what an answer for Xavier. You mentioned the counter punches. This is a 10-0 run after Providence had charged back into it. Jalen Lindsay nowhere close. Bullock the offensive rebound. And then a foul on Makira. His third. Thought he was headed the other way for a highlight reel dunk like he ended the Butler game with. You drive. Providence had cut it from 18 to single digits, but right back to 17. Daytona Day coming up. Everyone's making plans. Ready for Daytona Day? Yeah, spring break, baby. Woohoo! No, it's a Daytona 500. It's a race car event. Oh, but don't they spray champagne everywhere when they win? Yeah. Right, just like spring break. I know my sports. <laughs> Scotty. I think you got competition from Stamos on looking good into your 40s and 50s. You're, you're so good for my self-esteem. <laughs> I want to broadcast and barnstorm with you more frequently. How about Miles Davis nearing a triple-double? It was 10 assists already, 8 points and 8 boards. 
the versatility that's on display uh, can help in so many ways. I love his temperament, his mindset. Low maintenance player, just has a mature bearing. There's Bullock. Trying to solve that zone. And Bullock with a clean look out of the corner. Bentel gets the rebound. Up in traffic and fouled by Blewett. You know, Miles Davis, not only a mature bearing, but you look at his, you know, you look at the picture of him. His persona is like a 35-year-old that plays in those Tuesday, Thursday night adult yeah. leagues. Yeah. Just a veteran player. Doesn't dazzle you with athleticism he's not going to be on any highlight reels and yet his intelligence his purpose his leadership are such a valuable cog to what xavier is doing this year typical davis right very much yep he's bent with one more you just like his last name yep no of two for a guy who's a really good foul shooter Here he is playing point guard, Miles Davis. Initiating the offense. A little continuity, some ball reversal, the extra pass. Kaiser Gates fouled on a baseline drive. Only the third Providence foul of this half. It's the third on Rodney Bullock. Off of the inbound play again, this time Sean O'Meara the beneficiary, and the lead is at its largest. Well, Xavier, one of the better teams at executing on out-of-bounds plays for scores. They're not just trying to get the ball inbounds, they're looking to score aggressively off those plays. That's how Chris Mack reps day after day, even in shoot-arounds. Edwards misses point blank, unraveling on Providence right now. Blewett trying to make it hurt some more. Dunn charges to the rim. Wild shot, no. Got his own miss. And again, off the mark. Edwards again will shoot two. Tough night for Providence. Other than the first few minutes of the second half, they haven't found their way. They've not had the effort that Coach Cooley would hope to see at this stage of the season. Offensively not tied together. Issues here at the free throw line. Uh, just been a tough night across the board for the Friars. Third straight miss at the line for Ed Cooley's team. That missed seven free throws total tonight. Now the 19 attempts. And, and keep in mind, uh, you can't overreact to this. Uh, Xavier has punished a number of teams, not only this year, but over the years on their home court. And we're looking at a one or a two seed. If they continue to finish strong, uh, the Musketeers are going to be in that top line or second line of the NCAA tournament. Uh, but there are lessons to be learned if you're this Friar team, and they're correctable errors. Uh, transition defense, uh, moving the feet, uh, getting better looks, getting ball reversal, all things uh, that Coach Cooley and his staff will address. Reynolds tried to thunder it down. It went right to Miles Davis. And London tracking down the rebound and getting fouled. Well, and Joe, that play is indicative of the evening. Uh, the 50-50 ball, second shot, opportunities, alert and aggressive, uh, just beating Providence to the punch in every aspect of play. You mentioned how tough it is to play here. Since the turn of the century, there's only three buildings in America where teams have higher winning percentages than Xavier does here at the Sintas Center. They've never lost a top 25 matchup in this building. And a great program. You go back, look at the coaches over the years here. As good as it gets. McKende London off of the bench with an offensive rebound and a three. And Xavier starting to pull away. Bentel got fouled shooting the three by Larry Austin. 
the different combinations of players. Uh, this group on the floor, we hadn't seen them up until now. And again, Chris Mack at his disposal, the ability to go big, go small, put shooters on the floor. Uh, they can beat you in a myriad of ways. Man, it's been a rough night shooting. The line for Providence, that's what we mentioned there. Gonzaga, Kentucky, Wisconsin. The only places that have been better on their home floors. Well, you go back to Pete Gillen, Skip Prosser, Thad Mata, Sean Miller, now Chris Mack. All excellent coaches. There's been continuity in this program. Outstanding fans in terms of the home court advantage, a commitment from the university and the athletic administration to be successful. You put that all together, it's a dynamic package, and it's why Xavier has separated themselves from the competition. There's a lot of thought that this team is even a notch above what this place has done historically. This is a special group. Trying to go to 23 and 3. Tied for the best record in the nation right now. Villanova and Arkansas Little Rock. Look at all the touches. Reynolds backing in on Bento, who fouls him. Well, it's good offense. Everyone gets a touch. You play hot potato, you reverse the ball, and then you isolate with the matchup that you prefer on the block. Called that out of bounds. Not on the shot, on the floor. Had some easy buckets off inbounds plays from underneath. And they send it up top, Miles Davis. Bentle fronting Reynolds, Makira driving and kicking, and London rising. Almost got the roll as Dunn goes up for the rebound. Vazikas corner three. Got it. Good look by Chris Dunn. Draw the defense, deliver the dime. Rare minutes for Tyree Chambers, sophomore to Germany, 14 for Providence. Here's the trap. Austin gets rid of it. The cure penetrates and kicks. Now back to Austin. Driving on Chambers, who fouls him. Foul number seven. So one and one for Larry Austin. Well, this is a point in the game where you want to continue to be aggressive and run your sets, uh, but also be aware of time and score. Don't get on the heels too early to put it on ice. Yet, make Providence guard. If you're Xavier, you want to give yourself a chance to get high percentage looks, get yourself to the foul line, and salt the victory away. If you're Providence, you want to extend this game as long as possible, create possessions, and try and creep back in the game. So that was only the sixth foul, so on the next one, they'll be into the bonus. They promptly turn it over after the inbound. Fazekas, another three. A little bit short. Reynolds with the rebound. Blew it behind the back. Lucky that Austin was waiting in a pass. London with the up fake. Reynolds, a turnaround hook shot. Blewett fights for the rebound and gets fouled by Bullock. Xavier out physically. Providence tonight. London came off of the bench and knocked down a three. He became the ninth Xavier player to score tonight. Final weeks of the Big East season. Don't miss a single minute of the action. You can add the full remainder of the schedule to your calendar by going to foxsports.com slash Big East TV now. Butler with a win last night against Creighton. You figure on our next updated bracketology would hop back into the field. They were the first team out before that win against Creighton. These are the four teams currently in, according to our bracket experts. And I believe Butler, when it's all said and done, if they finish as expected, it'll be a fifth team. There's still enough time, both in the regular season and in the conference tournament. Because this is a deep league, quality league, you can improve that resume 
in a very short period of time that the selection committee looks at. Done with the left. There's that ability to accelerate. Just glides like he's on ice skates. As graceful as any player in the country and the best point guard in the country. Tonight, Providence struggling. But Ed Cooley has to be encouraged that they can get in the tournament with this group. When you have the best player and on short preparation, turnaround time, Providence becomes a very difficult matchup in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. League play is dramatically different. An 18-game schedule, the rigors of league play is dramatically different than the NCAA tournament. That's something that he has recognized and spoken to that and he just loved to see Chris Dunn get an opportunity on a big stage in the NCAA tournament. Like you said, such a tough prep, short notice. Certainly a team that can make a run. Well, in conference play, you know each team's tendencies so well. By the time you get into February, and you've seen these teams from year to year and over the course of this season. There's a razor thin margin for error. When you get in the tournament, teams do not know one another as well. There's just not the familiarity. Reason for the stoppage of the shot clock hadn't begun as Blewett gets blocked going to the rim. Dunn quickly back the other way, kicks it out. Bullock won't hit. Reynolds has it and a tie up and send it to Xavier. That's when you know you have a great home crowd. When they're so engaged that on each call, uh, you you sense they're aware of what's going on. Yeah. They're providing that support. Uh, there's not that apathetic or disinterested approach that uh, you have with some fan bases. 22 and 3 will do for you, huh? And decade after decade right. of success. Miles Davis able to dribble through it. Plays it off for London, who made one too many passes. And a bit sloppy right now for Xavier as Dunn gets barreled by Reynolds. Well, in the last timeout, there's a little scuffle here. We don't want anything at this stage of the game or season to lead to suspensions. That's where cooler heads must prevail. Good officiating here uh, to break it up. It's a good leadership among both teams. Incidental contact. Little type A testosterone uh -huh. cheese mullet play, which is natural. That's what you get with high level athletes. One on one here for Chris Dunn. Eight for ten from the line today. Joe. Miles Davis was one basket away from a triple double. Uh, impressive. And as much as those numbers are outstanding, to me it's his temperament, his bearing. Stays very even keel, not in the peaks or valleys emotionally, expends his emotional fuel in a very prudent way. And when you have a leader like Miles Davis on the court, that's a security blanket. Uh, for Coach Mack. It's an extension of him on the floor. Abel's back in the game with the four fouls. Chris Dunn just picked up a foul. It's number three on him. More importantly, it puts Trayvon Blewett at the line for a one and one. You know, I like here late that Providence still scrapping and fighting. 13 point game. They're not going quietly into the night. If you're Chris Mack, you want good habits. You want to salt this victory away, not get sloppy or complacent. And if you're Coach Cooley, you want to make a run. Uh, something positive going into the next game. It kept done from penetrating, but left Bentel open for a corner three. And a long rebound to Miles Davis. And I mentioned that, Joe, because basketball is a game of habits. And so playing the correct way so important because it carries over to the next game. Uh, just why practices are so important. You play like you practice. There's a steal. Tabor's got really sloppy. It's allowed Providence to get back into it. And Providence handed it right back. And Dunn could have taken another bounce there. Had a shot for himself or forced the defense to commit. And then that same pass would be open after one more bounce advancing the ball up the floor. 
couple moments tonight where Xavier's had a chance to really put Providence away and hasn't been able to. Farr takes it in a bento. On the second try, gets fouled. That's Dunn's fourth. Four points tonight for James Farr. He's been a force this year in the basket area at both ends of the court. And what a luxury for the most part this year, other than a few games, he's come off the bench. And I think that's where Xavier is able to separate from people, uh, even if the starters trade baskets and they're equal. When they go to their bench, we see Gunn launch another rocket. When Xavier goes to their bench, uh, the quality of their depth is so greater than their opponent's depth. And that's where you'll see them begin to dismantle or separate from an opponent, or even come back in the game with their bench. You said it a couple times, but 11 men have played tonight. Nine have scored for Xavier. Bentles three rebounded by Bullock. His jumper won't go. Farther rebound. Three opportunities, nothing to show. It's a foul on Kaiser Gates. Now, just what Coach Mack was concerned about that last time out, where he was emphasizing, you know, continuing to have good basketball habits, both offensively and defensively. Didn't want the slippage, uh, which can happen when you get a big lead at times. And Coley takes a timeout. We're back in 30 seconds. Big East doubleheader continues next. Seton Hall and Georgetown all coming up after our game right here on FS1. It's sponsored by Jeep Renegade. Take off and take on anything. That Seton Hall team right now projected as a ninth seed in the NCAA tournament. Seton Hall with those five sophomores. Very athletic, quick, dynamic group. Kevin Willard has done a nice job navigating, bringing that young team along. Here's LaMamba hopping inside, getting fouled by Gates, who doesn't like it. But LaMamba head to the line for two shots. Villanova last check was up double figures on Temple in the Big Five game. But Joe, look here, you have the top two, Villanova Xavier, the bottom two in the basement, DePaul and St. John's, and then that middle six, uh, Vine. There is some separation in that middle six, uh, but enough time for people to make move and continues to jockey for both Big East tournament seedings and then ultimately a better resume to help your seeding in terms of the NCAA tournament. One of two for LaMamba. He nearly tracked down his own miss. Miles Davis found it in the corners. Rewind inside of five minutes. Blew it, pushed it hard. Into the corner, Makira fearless. Scramble for the ball is won by Providence and Jalen Lindsay. And with Chris Dunn on the bench, it's Kyron Cartwright finding Bentel. One last breath for Dunn to get ready for the stretch run. And Ben Bentel knocks down a three to bring it to ten. And some empty possessions here for the Musketeers. Again, a difficult time in the game. But you want to stay aggressive. Too early to put it on ice. Give yourself a chance to get fouled and get a good high percentage look. Trying to get it with Farr. Now blew it, stepping back. Bullock the rebound. This is starting to feel like the first meeting between these teams when Providence made a late run. LaMamba gets fouled, and two shots coming for him with a chance to get it to single digits on the other side of this break. The Friars refusing to quit. find a spot to eat and take that game in when this one finishes. Edmund Sumner left the game midway through this half. 
Went back to the locker room with trainer David Fluker. Returned to the bench, but it hasn't returned to the game. And as we wind down the stretch here, you know, Providence is going to be putting the pressure on. That's a guy that it hurts to have sitting there instead of controlling the ball. Well, Sumner, both offensively and defensively, because of his athleticism, his skill, uh, his length, you know, makes this Xavier team different. And we saw that in his absence uh, because of the injury. Uh, it wasn't the same Xavier team. It also affects the depth, the rotation uh, that Coach Matt prefers to substitute with. With the two free throws from Junior Lamamba, it's down to an eight-point game. And the fans feeling a little, little bit restless in here, although a bad foul there on Trayvon Blewett. They'll head to the line two shots. Both teams in the double bonus. Well, high marks for Coach Cooley and the staff and his team for not going quietly into the night as they have rallied and put themselves back in position to where it's a competitive game. And Chris Mack frustrated because from his view, uh, this was a victory that should be salted away. Xavier, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the conference. One of two for Blewett. A nine point game inside of four minutes. Xavier led this game by as many as 19. Providence has battled back with Seal from Benzel. Quickly doubled. Now finds Dunn. Cartwright, top of the key. Three ball. Got it. That allows Providence to set their defense, full court pressure schemes. They'll back off as Miles Davis brings it up. You know, two possession game. If you're Xavier, time to execute. Providence, time for a shutout or a stop. Davis, the steadying hand throughout his career, finds Blewett. Ten to shoot. Makira feeds Reynolds. Reynolds sweeping through the lane and a foul for Jalen Reynolds. Well, wisely, Xavier. Goes through the bigs. Post feed, the back down. Reynolds with that jump hook. Gets a good release off the middle three fingers here. Nice rotation. Bottoms. Need for Reynolds, sets to the line for his first shot there tonight. Only 62% on the year. That's a couple of misses lately here for Xavier at the line. Bentel and Dunn, by the way, playing with four fouls right now. Dunn grimacing, looking at that left hand and wrist after that board. I think Chris Mack's the one that actually pointed it out to the officials. On the last possession, uh, Providence elected to have Chris Dunn off the ball, put him in the corner, and had Cartwright take on the ball handling responsibilities. Now they're going to invert Chris Dunn with the ball in his hands, Cartwright off the ball. Here's Cartwright. Saw some daylight. Got rejected. James Farr protects the rim. Well, not the look that Providence would have preferred. Smallest player on the floor going against the biggest player on the floor. That's where you need to read and react. Maybe jump stop, slam on the brakes. See if you can kick that ball out to an open teammate. Chris Mack takes a timeout. Both teams have one left. Both teams in the double bonus. Possession arrow to Providence. Either way, how about this run for the Friars to get back into this game? And it allows for both these coaches to teach. Chris Mack how to try and salt this victory away. And Coach Cooley, now with game pressure, uh, able to devise offense and defense that allows his team to grow and learn from this experience. Trying to win a game, but also it's informing this team in terms of their sensibilities as they come down the stretch as a basketball team. Looking for their NCAA best third top 10 road win. They saw the foul trouble they're dealing with. Don and Bentel and Bullock all with four. Well, Xavier tries to sweep the season series, tries to move to 5-1 and one against top 25 competition on the year.
See what Chris Mack designs out of the timeout. Nearly a turnover. Shot clock inside a 10. Benzel fouls Davis. That's number five, and he's finished. Well, Coach Cooley not happy with that call pleading the case. And a real blow, losing your center, Ben Bento. And putting Miles Davis, an excellent free throw shooter at the line. He didn't like it. I mean, from here it looked pretty legitimate. Let's see it again. Well, he sold it, but... Well, there's that crafty, grizzled vet, Miles Davis. Understanding the way the game is being officiated this year in terms of freedom of movement, more frequent whistles, mandated, top-down, coast-to-coast, and all of college basketball. And as a result, Miles Davis steps to the line. With a chance left for the first triple-double in Xavier since Two Holloway had one in 2011. This is his first double-double already with the assists and rebounds. We're going to have to wait. What's impressive about being on the brink of a triple-double was it was subtle. Uh, it's understated. Totally. And that's so fitting for Miles Davis. Just a humble leader, a hard-working kid. There's the mature again out top, almost with the steal. Chris Dunn, a step back. That's a three and a big one for Chris Dunn. Oh, pretty shot. 20 for Dunn and a six-point game with 2-0-3 and counting. Robbins sets their full court pressure. We'll look to trap. Davis gets it across. Blewett goes baseline and is fouled by Fizikas. Well, if you have a window, why not take it, right? You want to be aggressive and take something to the rim as long as you're under control on balance. Uh, but probe or investigate with aggressiveness. And I think when you've got that 15 to 22 point lead in the second half with 10 or 11 minutes to go, it's one of the more difficult aspects to coach. That's such a fine line because if your team shoots too early in the clock, you know, coaches get accused of allowing a team to get back. If you try and take some time off the clock, you get accused of putting it on an ice too soon. Yeah, right. And it's a, it's a fine line of how do you play aggressive, but with purpose and intelligence. Uh, make winning plays. When you come sit next to me, you don't get accused of anything. That's the beauty. Undefeated, Undefeated baby. <laughs> we're, we're going to Ruby's. <laughs> that's a win, even. That, that's, the yeah. big, that's the big task of the night. Davis. Zekas has it. Eight-point game. Providence running out of time. Bentel is fouled out. It's Cartwright for three. Blew it as foul. I appreciate the confidence of Cartwright. He's played well here tonight in this comeback. But maybe a look at that point to come back to Dunn. And allow him to try and make a move. Take your chances. Chaining sit down Bentel. Ben Bentel still standing since fouling out. A minute one to go. Trayvon blew it back to the line. He's got 21 tonight. 17 of those 21 came in the first half, and all the points in the second half have come here at the strike. Mm -hmm. Sophomore from Indy. And we have to credit Providence for coming back. This could have easily gone from 20 to 30 or 40. Uh, that's happened on a number of occasions here in terms of Xavier being able to just punish or pound teams. And so Providence did crawl back into the game. That is a positive they can take with them. And if you look at the free throws, the points they left at the free throw line uh, and some of the empty possessions and turnovers. And they've missed nine free throws tonight. They've turned it over 13 times, although they really clamped down on that 
After they turn it over a bunch in the early going, only two second half turnovers. Dunn banks it in. Wanted a foul as well. Won't get that, but he does get his team back to a two possession game. A spirited rally by Providence. Banks open in Cincinnati. High ball screen. Good, because you're going to need to go get some cash out for tonight. Obviously. Yeah. Coming down the stretch here. Regular season. Xavier will be at Georgetown on Saturday. That's on Fox. I think it's going to be a good atmosphere in here next Wednesday when Villanova comes to town. Wow. Looking forward to coming back for that. Seton Hall and praying to finish before the Big East Tournament. Here's what Providence has left at Seton Hall. Then DePaul and Creighton in Providence before finishing at the Garden. Ed Cooley likes that as kind of a tune-up, getting to play a game in the Garden, heading into the Conference Tournament, which, of course, is there at the Garden. And Providence needs to get to 9-9 nine and nine in league play at a minimum. Uh, that will get them in the NCAA Tournament. 10-8 and eight, uh, or anything better is gravy, but at least 9-9. Nine and nine. Their great start, 14 and 1, uh, has carried the day for them. Uh, since they've stepped into league play, a 500 team now, if they're not able to win tonight, they'd be 7 and 7. Students have stuck around. Some of the folks filed out when the lead was at about 10 with a minute to go, but Chris Dunn's three has it down to six. A two possession game uh, with the three point line, never comfortable as a coach with a two possession lead. Remember, Xavier has missed nine free throws tonight. Foul before it's inbounded. So they lose out of the chance on getting a, a steal, but they put Jalen Reynolds at the line, who's not a very good foul shooter. Well, and no time off the clock. At this point, you're trying to stretch the game, create more possessions, so that's a positive for Providence. Had a double-double in the first game. 15 points, 11 boards. One point shy of another double-double here. Got him off to a good start. Get the crowd rocking with a couple of dunks early. And some big plays down the stretch. Two big free throws. A double-double for Jalen Reynolds. Eight-point game inside of a minute. Chris Dunn jacks it up there. LaMamba fouled or blocked by Reynolds. They swing it for Dunn. Miles Davis had it. And it was knocked out of bounds by Providence. Well, this lineup you prefer to get the ball into Chris to uh, Miles Davis's hands, and there it is. An opportunity for a triple double if he gets fouled. <laughs> the crowd knows it. That's awesome. A little fan favorite. These fans appreciate his unselfishness, his diligence, his hard work, his leadership. Triple-double in five years at Xavier belongs to Miles Davis. Eleven, twelve, and twelve for number 15. And Chris Mack will get him a curtain call here. Right loses it out of bounds. Well, Miles Davis, a great teammate. Authentic. 
in his love of his teammates and this coaching staff, this program and school. Deserving of that rousing ovation. Cartwright fouls blew it. Yeah, such a tremendous leader. So many times what he does isn't reflected in the stats. So how great is it that something statistically reflects how valuable he is to this team tonight? Yeah, he's the type of player you want to play with because he unconditionally cares in an authentic manner about all of his teammates and about the front of the jersey, getting the wins and doing something special. Uh, this is a team that's locked in on trying to win a national championship. You think they've got what it takes? You think they have the pieces to make that run? Oh, they're built for a deep run in the NCAA tournament. Again, the balance. Uh, it's rare when you have personnel, depth, size, strength, skill, quickness, and inside-outside attack. Larry Austin, exclamation. one against the top 25 this season for Xavier. That's the best mark in the country. So is 23 and three. Bazikas drops in two. And Xavier's gonna get out of here with another win over a ranked opponent. They trailed one time at two nothing. That was it. Chris Max team with a hard fought win over Ed Cooley's bunch. They sweep the season series. 85-74 the final. Now we get you to our Fox College.